Depleted mother syndrome, DMS, arises when the mother faces increasing demands while her personal resources are declining. Hi and welcome, my name is Yvette Rose. I'm going to be your host here for this video for today where we're going to be diving into depleted mother syndrome. Now just quickly, who am I? I am well known for having written this big book called Metaphysical Anatomy, which is a big book of psychosomatic stress patterns and elements for adults. So there's all the psychosomatic stress of that in there. And of course, also have the kids version as well. Your ancestry is talking. Are you listening? Now let's go straight into this topic of depleted mother syndrome. This is something that I'm sure almost every mother have been affected by and absolutely me as well you know I'm pregnant right now with our second daughter and and the the, the the sleep deprivation and the depletion that I went through with my first daughter with Zaya was unbelievable and extremely intense and I want to talk a little bit about how I manage this and also to share some tips and simple pieces of advice that might help you to improve your experiences as well because when we look at this syndrome, right, there's a huge imbalance that starts to lead to a lot of heightened emotional sensitivity towards both our internal and external triggers as well. And also in simple terms, right, a mother's button gets pushed quite rapidly and quite frequently, causing a lot of exhausted and just frazzled emotions and feelings. Now, one of the points that I recognize here for myself and the reason why I slipped into this, especially my personal experience, what I noticed for me was I didn't recognize my limits. I didn't recognize my limits. My expectations were sky high. You know, I have to be this. I have to be that. I have to get this right. I have to, you know, all these expectations that I placed on myself as a new time mom and trying to hold it all together, trying to hold my career together, it was a mess. And it was overwhelming. Because I was constantly trying to reach these high expectations that I set for myself professionally and personally. And now I'm dealing with a little human being that I'm trying to get to know and understand. And there's a lot of demands that's on you as a wife, as a partner, as a business person, and having to also, you know, throw in your weight and to support and all these things that just comes with being a mom that's not even in the list that I mentioned there's a lot of undisclosed disclosures that comes with being a parent right so not recognizing my limits is where I learned that when I reach a certain mindset when I reach a certain way of feeling when I start to find myself in a physical state of being that's where and normally in, in a negative sense here in this case, I would always try to push beyond that because I'm a pusher, meaning I push myself. And what happens is when we are pushers, when we're always trying to exceed or trying to you know, achieve or reach certain expectations, we tend to ignore and not recognize where our thresholds are. I had to learn how to bring my energy back to me and to be okay with doing what I'm doing and knowing that what I'm doing is enough and it's good enough in that given moment. Because if I could have done better, I would have. Let's be frank. We don't wake up every morning thinking, how much can we ruin our lives? We don't do that, right? We wake up with expectations. We wake up with certain standards and ways of in which we want to do things. But I've really had to learn to compromise more with my expectations. I had to learn to compromise more with what I think I can do. Because now... You just gave birth. Your body takes two years to heal from giving birth. Whether it was natural or cesarean, your body takes time to heal. You're not going to be in your optimal self than what you were before you got pregnant. You don't just relapse into that within a few days. right? So there's a huge physical process. There's a biochemical process. There's a hormonal process. And what's frustrating is that we feel, and especially I did, I felt frustrated 
that my body and my way didn't snap back to the way that it was. I felt angry because I couldn't get, I didn't have the same energy and motivation and drive to work, 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 and go, 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 do, do, do. Because now where my focus in the past was all just zoned in on me and my career and my husband, now my focus is literally being split into different segments, into different areas of my life, including with the child that needs me, right? So there's so many things where we have been used to living in a certain way where we had a set limit of limits and thresholds that we were used to. Those limits and thresholds, they're changing. And that means our awareness of these limits and thresholds also needs to change with it. And that is where I got stuck. I was resisting it. I was resisting so many aspects of this new way of life that made me feel I couldn't do what I needed to do. And I kept trying to stay connected to this old identity and this old state of being and way of doing things. And it's not congruent with this new life that is unfolding right in front of me. So that's one point there that I learned over time was to recognize my new limits, to recognize my new threshold. And not just recognizing it because it's like having an awareness of a problem. You know, this the problem half solved. What's the other half? It's action. So now recognizing where your new limits are, where your new thresholds are, what action are you going to take to balance it? What are these limits? What do you need to hear, feel, see, or sense to know that you've reached that limit? And let me tell you, anger is not the answer. Meaning when I feel angry, when I feel resentful, when I feel you know, irritated, that's now in damage control mode. You want to catch it before you get to that point. So it's really about listening to a new refined way of how your body and your mind operates. So the moment you start to feel discomfort, listen. That's what I learned as well. Now, another thing also is if you have a negative relationship with support, then it's going to be a problem, right? You will struggle. Because I know for me to ask for support was tough. It was hard. Because firstly, when I asked for support, I would feel that now I'm obligated right? I'm obligated to this person energetically, or now I feel I'm not in control of the situation because whoever's supporting me, I don't have a say of how I need that support to be, right? And I always felt that support came at a price. And so I've had to learn to communicate when I ask for support, to immediately say, I need help, but I'm not in the place right now to do something back. And then it's for you to decide do you want to be in debt to that person in a year or two where you are maybe do you have the energy or resources to do something back for them? Or is this a moment where you just have to learn to say, listen, I, am, I need help, I need support, but I can't guarantee that I can do something back for you. I really, truly just need absolute support in this most authentic form. And you are allowed to do that. And I've had to learn to do that because... I don't know what my life is going to be like in a year or two. I cannot make false promises. I will not do that. So I'd rather find a different way of finding support than, than sell my time and my soul and my energy to a future event that I might not be able to control or that I might not be able to live up to. So it's really also about respecting where your limitations are, right? We're going back to limitations and thresholds and being okay with that. But support? That is tremendously important. They say it takes a village to raise a child. It's, it's very true. You know, as funny as it sounds, it's, it's kind of true. You, you need help. It's not just with a child, but for you, maybe to do something. Maybe physically there's something that you can do because your body is still healing. The list can go on. That's very, very important. Another point that I also learned was to have boundaries. I had such a fear of saying no when I didn't want to be interrupted certain times, when I didn't want to do things at certain times, because there's always this fear of rejection. There's maybe this fear of judgment. This fear, this fear of, oh, I will lose love and support if I say no. Well, boundaries shouldn't come at a price. You want to surround yourself with people and circumstances 
that can respect your boundaries and at least have a certain level of understanding and compassion for that. That's very important sometimes to find, especially when you're dealing with family who, you know, they, everyone's business is everyone else's business. So <laughs> having boundaries with family members can sometimes be a little bit hard. However, people can reinforce boundaries through consistency. If your family is not used to you having boundaries, they will get used to it if you are consistent with it. But if you're inconsistent, no one's going to take you seriously. So that's something very important also to keep in mind and something that I personally have learned as well. And sometimes our fear of saying no, of having boundaries, has a lot to do with our self-worth, right? Because the barometer of our self-worth that we set is based on general feedback and responses that we receive from people in the past. When we had certain needs, maybe when we express certain things, and especially when we express boundaries as well. But here's the thing, that feedback should not be the barometer by which you now decide what am I worthy of saying no to and what am I not worthy of saying no to. That is a big no-no. And I learned that the hard way. You are worthy of having boundaries just like any other God-given human being. It is your birthright to have boundaries. If we don't have boundaries, then your life is going to feel like it's a mess. It's going to feel like it's upside down and everything is just happening and taking place all over the place as other people want it to and you're going to feel completely unresourceful and out of control and you're going to feel like you're spinning your wheels trying to get control of certain circumstances that you feel you're not allowed to have control of because you don't have boundaries in that given moment. Ah, the lessons that I've learned. <laughs> so that's one other thing as well that that I learned that might be helpful for you as well to really shake off and break the cycle of depression because I, I went through all of this myself as well and I found myself asking one question as well. There was one question that started to come up a lot and that is what am I compensating for? What am I compensating for? Let me explain. I ask myself another question. Why am I in this position right now of feeling so depleted? Why am I in it? We don't end up where we are for no reason. They are hidden and often, you know, like blind spots, right? Drivers in our subconscious mind, like programs that can set forward certain behavioral patterns. Now, we've already touched on quite a few already. Now, for me, mine was, when I really got to the bottom of it, was not feeling good enough as a mother. I felt that I had to do more than what I was capable of. And I felt torn because I'm a businesswoman. I have my own business. I love working with people. I love helping people. It, I live and breathe it. It will always be who I am. And to, to find a balance between an integral part of this of who I am, my identity, and having a child at the same time, the demands of being a mother felt much higher because I didn't allow myself to have balance between the two. I felt that if I was just being a mom, I was failing my business. If I was just being in my business, I was failing my child. How do you bring all of this together, right? So I try to do everything all at once. And what helped me to break the cycle was actually to categorize and structure my life. Because my life was structured around just a business and travel. Now I have to structure it around having a child as well that I deeply love and a child who also needs me. So remember that your focus can only be at one place at a time. Even if you think that you can be in multiple places at once, because the quality of your focus will not be as good as what it would be if it's focused on one thing. Yeah, we can split it, but that's also where the scatteredness comes from. That's where the divided energy comes from. You're literally pouring your energy out into different areas that you are trying to focus on, and in most cases, you can't really always control. So I've learned to shift my focus to one task at a time, one goal at a time, one intention at a time. And I literally had to slow down, even physically slow down. And 
it got to a point where even like basic self grooming even became really hard because my focus felt so pulled in so many different directions that I didn't value the things that I used to value in the past because you don't have the energy to place energy and value to things that used to be mattering to you, right? So that's also why we start to neglect ourselves. And when we neglect ourselves as women, we plummet even more. We love to groom in one way or another. It doesn't have to mean makeup and hair. It can be in other self-loving ways. Right, so now also what can happen is that they could, and this all of this is putting strain on your relationship with your partner and with other people, and that's going to start to becoming evident, right? Leading to increased stress, emotional distance, and more frequent arguments. Now, mothers in particular struggle to find self time, right? Time for rest, enjoyable activities, and how to also do that guilt free because you're so wired. And biologically programmed to just be there and to provide and support for a child. And suddenly when that energy comes back to you, it's almost like we unlearn how to look after ourselves. Because now we have this force and the source of being in ourselves, in our lives that, that, that consumes you, right? It's almost like your entire existence becomes wrapped around this child. And the more we learn how to just focus on something else, we subconsciously unlearn how to look after ourselves as well. So it decreases our opportunities for bringing that focus back to us, like just even exercising a little bit or um, looking after our diet, our physical well-being, and so many other things. And then on top of that, sleep deprivation and all these disturbances, you know, that's including interrupted REM sleep, it has a profound and lasting effect on mothers. And these effects also include depression, a weakened immune system and high blood pressure, and it impacts our overall well-being. Now I'm going to share here with you quickly um, what I did to start to help me with this depletion. And, and this is, and I'm not a medical advisor, so disclosure here, I'm just sharing with you what I did. Whatever you want to try, you have to research it yourself and check with your doctor and your healthcare practitioner as well. But I did increase my vitamin D complex intake. I did increase my iron and my vitamin C intake and protein intake as well. Because when you're stressed, these specific resources go out the door like that. I love my vitamin D complex. I love my vitamin three, my vitamin D3 niacin, especially it soothes the nervous system. Magnesium calcium also soothes the nervous system. Vitamin C is absolutely vital. If, if you're pregnant, then vitamin C, I've learned 2,000 milligrams is the max. But after pregnancy, you can have your vitamin C to 5,000 milligrams, whatever you feel comfortable with. Because if your immune system goes down, it means that you're stressed. It means that you're in the fight mode and flight mode. And the body uses all these resources, including tapping into the iron and the vitamin B complex minerals in the body. And it drains the body of that. And of course, you're going to feel weak. And if you feel physically weak, you're going to feel mentally weak. Also, for example, um, my protein shakes. I love my protein shakes. I love to mix protein shakes with moringa powder. It is amazing, moringa powder, especially when you're breastfeeding, to give that, that, that substance back into your body as well. And so, and, and I mean, I was shocked to just know how amazing I could feel with just basic intake of my vitamins. So these were very important points and aspects that I brought into my health. And vitamin D3 was absolutely crucial. Because when you feel depressed, when you feel depleted, the last thing you want to do is go outside. So bring the sun to you and take a good, good supplement that's vitamin D3. And also every morning I walked. I walked every morning because that was my quiet time. That was my time to think. It was my time to reflect. And once a week, I went for a massage. Or my husband would help me to just, you know, release the stress. And of course, I would massage him as well. But absolutely, it doesn't matter where I am in the world. Once a week, there's a massage involved. And it was absolutely needed. It was part of my self-care routine as well. And as partners of all, take, t take turns to cook. right? Take turns to clean. Because my anxiety buster was to activate also the alpha brainwave state. And this resets your nervous system. And a really easy way to do that, I have so many videos of this on my YouTube channel as well, is to breathe in the mouth, out the nose, 
deep breaths 13 times and the last breath in the mouth you hold as long as you can and then you exhale out the nose you're gonna feel fantastic and listen mamas you got this so guys there you have it also remember to subscribe to my channel stay up to date and also i have a free mac membership website where we have so many courses up there there's meditations there's workshops whatever you need it's there there's so many wonderful webinar replays as well that you can benefit from and also to observe and to learn from guys also remember that i have written 18 books 18 1 8 And one of many among them are metaphysical anatomy and psychosomatics for children. So this one is a psychosomatics for adults. This one is a psychosomatics for kids. So these books are super popular. People love it. If you want to learn more about how your body works, understanding messages behind it, you know, maybe you have that gnawing pain or maybe an element that's surfacing and you want to understand what is it that your body is trying to tell you. Guys, these books are going to be absolutely invaluable to you. You can find it at eventbooks.com where you will also find all my other 18 books and guys also remember to keep asking all these great questions i love to answer your questions at ask event where we discuss you know life conundrums and you know life challenges and just answer questions perhaps where you feel you know quite stuck in your life i would love to share my perspective with them and to help you to resolve perhaps certain pain points that you might be having in your life as well so guys remember to stay in touch there's so many great things that's happening and also something really awesome is that this book is already also in video format so imagine 679 medical elements in video format and with also with meditations and healing courses workshops master classes everything behind that in our platinum membership site so guys remember to check that out there is so many great things happening there so see you there